Uh, hello there. My name is Frank. I am 28 millimeters tall, and I'm auditioning today for the part of Scary Ghost. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's build some freaking monsters for the D&D tabletop. Welcome back to the Crazy Crafter. My name's Colin Bressy. Let's help you craft your passion daily. Boom! Oh, but first, wait. Let's go on a field trip to the theater! Okay, so why the field trip today? Before we get into the sculpt, one of the things that I like to consider uh, with any build is shape, right? Uh, and I thought it might be kind of fun to go down to one of the theater spaces I get to work in uh, all the time and discuss shape a little bit with you guys. Shape is such a wonderful component uh, that artists get to utilize all the time, whether we're performing on stage or sculpting a monster for the tabletop, you get to reveal information about your character and people get to feel that shape. So with this upcoming monster sculpt live stream on my channel, I decided to let the audience choose what monster I would sculpt and let shape help me determine how the build evolved. One of the cool things about the Crazy Crafter live stream is getting to draw inspiration from everyone out there in the Crazy Crafter community, everyone from the live chat, from the Discord, and during this week's live stream, you guys suggested that I build a ghost, which was good because I wanted to kind of leave it up to you guys. I thought it would be fun, and I thought the ghost was a, a, great, a great challenge to build within the two hours, and Zane was building a stone golem, Michael was working on a knoll, and Martin got to... Uh, put together some little minions to accompany this massive monster that he'd sculpted and created. Step number one for me was taking this thin gauge copper wire and making it thicker. <laughs> so I twisted it together and started to form the rough shape of my ghostly sculpt and um, I was able to create the frame with uh, a longer neck, kind of gangly body. Again, I, I had images of a vulture or a velociraptor in the shape of kind of just like this long, weird, gangly, menacing looking apparition that I wanted to strike fear and terror into the players when it went down on the tabletop. So I did that. I pulled some hands, like just t like made some little circles with uh, some pliers and then cut little individual pieces of the wire to wrap around the hand and hot glued them there and then I had some creepy looking hands. That citadel skull you saw me playing around with there is something I've had assembled for quite some time and I decided to finally put it to use and make it a part of my ghost sculpt and uh, you'll see I'm pretty excited how, how this ends up turning out. This is looking mighty fine at this stage. Uh, the next step for me, I started taking some tin foil, wrapping it around the wireframe, giving the ghost and the apparition a little bit of mass. And this also gave me some surface area so I could start paper mache and gluing my strips of paper towel down onto the ghost and sculpting its ghostly cloth. Oh. Nothing fancy with this. Um, paper mache technique this is the dm scotty way um back at the beginning of this year he was on the crazy craft for live stream and we built a shambling mound uh, it was a super rad stream i can link that up in the corner here for the video as well if you want to check that out but this is a mixture of 50 50 uh, pva glue and water and then you layer the strips of paper towel on around your wireframe and you can create a really cool ghostly cowl effect After two hours, we all had made pretty good progress on our sculpts. Zane completed his stone golem, and Martin had done a great job creating a bunch of these little minions uh, to serve their bigger master. Um, and it was time for me to figure out how I was going to put a jaw on my ghost sculpture.
forming the jaw for the ghost. I used some leftover sprues I had from a bunch of GW Kill Team Octarius terrain I was uh, assembling and threw some green stuff over that to make the jaw. And then I took some uh, more green stuff and made some fingers and uh, the hands and tried to make some creepy looking hands for, for this ghost. Frank's looking pretty mean at this stage. <laughs> um, but any good monster needs some amazing teeth, right? So I uh, took some leftover green stuff and made, uh, shaped some pretty, pretty gnarly sharp teeth, and then also made some pretty cool, like, mandible jaw looking things. And then because I'm impatient, I hot glued them all in. So I hit this with uh, some leftover rattle can that I had from the Feywild build I just worked on last month. And I was happy uh, with the color for the cloth of the ghost, but the skin tone, I didn't like the blue very much. And I felt like it needed to be a little bit darker. We needed some more contrast between, you know, this, this ghostly cloak and, slash cloth and the skin. So I layered on some, some cheap... Um, matte acrylic folk art paint. I used a couple sh varying shades of purple and I uh, was happy with, with that skin tone. A little bit of red in the eyes, some watered down purple contrast paint to tone down the eyes and tie all the skin tones together. And Frank here is ready for his close up, Mr. DeMille. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Was I able to incorporate and utilize some good shape in my in my sculpt? This is only the second monster I've ever sculpted for the tabletop, uh, and I'm really enjoying sculpting creatures. Uh, it's something I'm going to do more of on the channel. Um, just monsters are so much fun to build. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comments below um, what, what you thought of this and if you incorporate shape into your next build. I'm excited to see what you come up with. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for me this week here on The Crazy Crafter. Thanks for hanging out. If you like this video, give it a like. Um, if you want to consider some long-term support, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell notification, come hang out on a live stream with Zane Morgan, Michael Patterson, and I. Um, if you want to do some other long-term support stuff, there's uh, the Crazy Crafter Patreon you can consider supporting me on, or uh, you can head on over to the link to the merch store to Teespring, check out some cool Crazy Crafter swag. But until then, be sure to craft your passion daily, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next live stream. Cheers, y'all.